Hello, my name is Mehdi Benis. I'm an associate professor at the University of Oulu. Uh, today I'll be talking to you about the uh, intersection of uh, federated learning and wireless. So ever since the uh, paper of uh, Peter and Al uh, came out last year, the topic of federated learning has received a tremendous attention in the 5G and 6G uh, community. This can be seen, for instance, uh, here, uh, where uh, Nokia, a network vendor, has used federated learning in the context of uh, anomaly detection and uh, uh, analyzing the traffic uh, dynamics in their uh, network. So here we have three base stations, for instance, and uh, they want to collaboratively build a model and uh, and uh, get information about the traffic load in the network. Uh, Huawei has used it uh, for uh, their uh, AI uh, networking. Uh, at the edge and uh, in devices, so meaning base stations and, and, and smartphones. Uh, Qualcomm has been uh, very adamant of federated learning from the very beginning. And maybe more interestingly here, uh, federated learning is already being discussed as a killer app for, uh, for, for, for over overloading wireless networks due to the sheer amount of, of data that will be uh, generated in the uplink, for instance, for the industry 4.0, uh, autonomous driving, uh, virtual reality, and other applications. Now, from a wireless perspective, in fact, federated learning can be uh, seen from two different uh, perspectives. So the one on the left here, uh, referred to as digital uh, federated learning, which is uh, most of the current literature. Here, for instance, for a parameter server uh, model training, uh, typically what you do in fact for training model, the, uh, every client will be assigned an orthogonal uh, resource block or channel or, or carrier uh, so that it can transmit uh, its, its, its model uh, reliably to the server. Okay? So here the idea is to avoid interference uh, coming from uh, simultaneous uh, transmissions of the model among a lot of uh, clients or devices. And the idea here is, yeah, we want to avoid this interference, therefore we allocate orthogonal uh, allo uh, resources among clients. So obviously this will not scale very well uh, with a number of workers. And we can also look at scheduling here of clients uh, via channel prediction or model prediction. Uh, in contrast to that, on the right-hand side, what you can see here, this is analog uh, federated learning, again, for a parameter server. Here, the idea is, in fact, we, 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 instead of avoiding interference, we harness it uh, in order to transmit the model uh, of all the clients within one uh, resource block. So this is referred to as non-orthogonal uh, transmission. And this obviously scales very well across the number of workers. And in fact, the performance improves as you, as you increase the number of workers. Uh, and as we will see uh, next, in fact, this uh, provides a fast and communication efficient uh, model training uh, approach and could even uh, provide you privacy uh, for free. And I'll come back to it later. So zooming in further. Uh, so here you can see on the left-hand side, you have, you have the time and frequency here uh, assigned to clients. So you see every client is assigned an orthogonal uh, resource. That is either the time or the uh, frequency, okay? Uh, on, on, on the right-hand side for FL, in fact, uh, for analog FL rather, here all the devices will be transmitting, in fact, on the same uh, resource. Uh, uh, that is time and frequency. So uh, what happens in fact here, as you can see, so the, the client will transmit a, 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 a combination of its model theta multiplied by the channel conjugate and plus some uh, dual variable uh, scaled by, by a parameter uh, O in order to, to, to find the, the transmit power uh, within which the, the, the model is transmitted by the client. And then of course the averaging is done over wireless plus the, 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 the channel noise in fact that will be incurred over this uh, uplink uh, wireless. Okay. So as a result, in fact, here, uh, I mean, uh, besides the orthogonal versus or non-orthogonal uh, perspective, here every client, in fact, will encode, so, so for, for the left-hand side, every client will encode its model uh, using a given coding rate, and then it will try to find the, the transmit power to transmit with the coding rate. So essentially here, it does not take it, uh, advantage of, of the fact that in FL you, you are interested in the model average, not in the individual model. In contrast to that, for analog FL, in fact, 
uh, here we, we leverage the fact that we are interested in the model average. And this is why we use now here um, the, uh, uh, the multiple access channel waveform superposition property. Essentially, the channel will, 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 will help you average uh, uh, the model among all the clients in the upper. So here, as I said before, the performance uh, on one hand will improve as you increase the number of workers in the analog case, whereas in the digital case here, the informers actually will, will go down, okay? And of course, there are many, many, uh, many, uh, many I mean, uh, advantages in, in, in following the analog uh, FL case. But there are some assumptions which I'll come back to it uh, to, to later on. So this is what we set out to do. We, we formulated this analog FL here uh, using, uh, so as a constraint problem and solved it using uh, the classical primal dual ADMM. So you could also, of course, prove in the convex case that uh, the uh, analog FDMM uh, satisfies the two, con I mean, two statements here. One is the optimality gap, which is non-increasing, uh, and the uh, primal and, and dual residual, which converge uh, uh, to zero as, as k goes to, to infinity. What's more interesting here, we try to validate this, this uh, analog versus digital uh, federated learning for two tasks. So here is the first one here. This is a linear regression. And what we plot here, in fact, uh, we plot the, the training loss versus the number of communication uh, uploads, right? For the analog uh, FDMM, the digital FDMM, 10 times more resources allocated to the di uh, digital uh, uh, FDMM, and also another uh, baseline for analog uh, grading set. So as you can see here immediately, in fact, that uh, the, the analog FDMM, uh, I mean, uh, the performance, I mean, the training loss uh, drops down very fast. Okay. Of course, I trace uh, later on due to channel noise, but essentially you can see the, the, the performance gap here with respect to uh, the digital uh, FDMM, which is in, in black, uh, as well in blue. And also now, if we multiply the number of resources by 10, then you can see actually that the analog uh, and the digital performance starts to be on par. On the right-hand side, uh, what we plotted, this is the energy efficiency for the communication part. So we plotted the loss, training loss versus number of uh, versus the uh, signal to noise ratio for uh, the analog uh, which is in red and the black which is uh, for the digital uh, for uh, two number of channel users here okay so one is uh, 100k and the other one is 200k so as you can see here in fact again the analog uh, outperformed uh, the uh, the digital uh, baseline and uh, now if you multiply the number of resources again by two to, to, to allocating 200 uh, thousand resources for, for, for the clients, uh, you can see here that the, uh, the digital start to outperform the analog, but only at a very high uh, uh, signal to noise ratio. Okay. For the next task, which is image classification, again here we plot the test accuracy this time versus the number of communication uh, uh, uploads for, for, again, for the analog uh, stochastic version of uh, ADMM, the uh, analog stochastic gradient sand, and the digital counterparts. And again, 10x here refers to uh, having 10 times more resources allocated for the digital uh, baseline. So what you can see here again is that the, uh, the, the analog uh, baselines are, are extremely fast in terms of, of, of conversions to higher accuracy, whereas the digital one, which is here in the gray on the right-hand side, I mean, takes uh, much more uh, communication uploads to transmit the, the model. On the right-hand side, uh, we plot the energy efficiency again. As you can see, the analog uh, uh, I mean, uh, baseline shows a high, much higher performance and the digital reaches it only until um, uh, 15 dB. Uh, 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 signal to ratio. Okay. Finally, for scalability here, we were interested in the, seeing the number of channels that are required to achieve a given target, uh, I mean, a uh, target loss, okay, for both uh, near regression and, and uh, image classification. So you can see here, in fact, the, the number of work is required, a uh, number of the channel uh, required uh, does not I mean, does not, does not scale as, as in the digital case. So you can see here in the digital case, require much more um, uh, channels in order to, to guarantee that uh, target loss uh, and like the analog case, okay, which is again expected. So essentially here, what what we what, what is the, the hypothesis here? In fact, is in fact you need to do this uh, co-design of wireless uh, communication and 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 model training, and we could show in fact that, that we need uh, using the analog transmission uh, a strategy helps you uh, in terms of communication efficiency, bandwidth efficiency, and scaling. And it can also be shown that it can provide uh, privacy. Now, in terms of extensions, well, we need to relax on what differences here. We assumed uh, synchronous transmission. 
Uh, we can also look at model, model quantization, compression, and sparsification techniques, and extending this to fully distributed uh, uh, topology. Okay. So here is the, the paper here and my email address. Uh, thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have.